Well there, hello there. Oh, <laughs> Nice to meet you officially. Well, I'm so glad to be here today. All right, Hillary. So tell me a little bit about what you're going to sing, a little bit about the piece. Um, put us into that story. Yes, yeah. Um, so I will be singing today um, an excerpt from Afterlife by Tom Chapulo. And this is the very opening of the opera. And this opera is about Pablo Picasso and Gertrude Stein, um, which the character I'll be singing is Gertrude Stein. Um, their sort of tumultuous relationship, um, especially during and after World War II, because Gertrude Stein stayed um, in Paris and stayed in France during the occupation um, of France. So, and her stance was very soft towards the Nazis and Pablo Picasso tried to fight against them. So um, it's really the whole piece is about reconciling the role of art in wartime and reconciling um, its role in culture. So I find it really important right now to talk about, to talk about that. What's that? Very appropriate. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm just, I'm kind of inspired by this piece right now um, and figuring out how to reconcile my role in the world right now as well. Um, but what I love about this opening, so it's called Afterlife, so they're dead, they're in the afterlife and they're waking up. So the first one to wake up is Gertrude Stein. And, and she- when you say wake up, do you mean they've just passed? And they're waking up in the afterlife or they have they taken a nap in the afterlife but they've been dead for a long time it's kind of a nap they don't know how long it's been i think it's been a time maybe okay. um, it's it's an undisclosed amount of time that they've been dead but something has woken them up so she's trying to figure out what's calling her back into consciousness so at first she thinks it's her partner, Alice B. Tolkis, who she uh, refers to as Baby Precious. Um, so sh she thinks that maybe it's my lover. Um, and Pablo does the same where he wakes up and the first thought is, is uh, oh, it must be someone who loves me. Yeah. That, that's waking me up and asking me these questions. Um, and then later in the show, a girl arrives and she's the one that's really asking the questions and it's a girl an unnamed girl the title is just the character is just girl and she um, is asking them what it was all for because they survived and she didn't survive World War two so she they are fighting with each other about the importance of their own art you know so was was Gertrude more important or was Pablo more important? And, you know, so there's a lot of arguing back and forth. So, um, but this is, this is her waking up and she was very narcissistic, I would think. I could probably read for 10 more years and still want to know more about Gertrude Stein and her personality. Um, but she was very, um, later in the piece it says, cubism she brought cubism to literature and it is very true with her famous rose is a rose is a rose um so a lot of the text is like this um is is very um i wouldn't say it's an easy to follow narrative at times so that's something that also uh, is challenging about this piece that i you know i want to make sure that i'm saying something even when it doesn't necessarily make sense um, so yeah, that's kind of where, where this comes in. So she's waking up and asking who, who woke me up? <laughs> Great. Well, okay. Do you want to just sing through it once and, um, and then we'll go from there. Great. And I, I'll start at the beginning. Um, and I might have to play some pitches along the way. Oh. Just back into a section. <laughs> fine. That's totally fine. But I'll, I'll wake up now yeah. with okay. a few of these spoken haze. Hey. Hey. He.
question me, question me, question me, conjure me. so cool I love it very very cool okay on first listening because I've never heard this before um, and just kind of listening and I love all the things that you were saying about her that you think she's rather narcissistic and has all these things yeah there's like an overwhelming sense of confidence right that comes from her except there's also this because of what's happening to her in the moment there's also an overwhelming sense of confusion yes right which is super interesting um, it's almost as if she were coming back into herself as she's waking up. So it's like waking up in a body that you, that you, you see when you wake up and you don't know who you are, where you are, what's going on. And then as you're waking up more and more, you're starting to come back into yourself and you're starting to remember who you are, what you're all about, what you did, who loved you, who hated you. Right? It's like, it's almost like, I guess, like an amnesia, a situation of amnesia, right? Where you start remembering things, but much faster, right? It has that quality to it, right? And it's sort of manic in a way. Yes, I th it, it does feel very manic. And um, there's a lot of I. Once she gets past, hey, who is, who is waking me up? Well, I, I guess her first thought then is, is, is Alice, is baby precious. That's her next first thought. But then it's all I. I was this, I was the cover of time, is her big line that she repeats throughout. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think, so there's a lot of, I, so what I'm kind of hearing, or at least what I'm, or I'm thinking, I just ideas, especially at first blush, that you can definitely use the repetitions of the words, and you really just have to find, I think, in your mind, different thoughts that she's having, just like you said, right? Like, you, you know, she says, sound of a sigh, I. I think those two things could be completely separate, potentially. Yeah. Or they could, be, they could be connected. She could be saying she's, she's now hearing also that she is hearing her voice, mm. right? Versus just hearing it in the inside. She's hearing it from the outside. So maybe it's like sound of a sigh. I, that was my voice, right? And now, and, and in that moment of like recognizing herself through her, the sounds her body makes, then she says, I was the cover of time. And that's the first time she says I in this whole thing. So that maybe you can use that in that moment more of her all of a sudden with that sound of a sigh. It's like she's recognized herself really truly. Mm -hmm. And now it's like, I, I, ooh, ooh, that's me. That's me, right? I, I was a cover of time, I. 
And then that's what she, and then she, and then you see a part of her, the other part of her where she, because I love the dynamics are really super helpful, it seems, but all then she goes, everyone loved me. Right? It's just all of a sudden, and it comes out of nothing. I, I, I see. So I have that moment of like, I, that was me. I was on the cover of time. I was, and in that silence, what comes flooding back to you is that everybody loved you. So see that and like feel it on your face before you even say, everybody loved me. There's that right? pause there. Yes. And, and I, you know, is that, is that quiet moment, you know, is she, ha ha, everybody loved me? Or is it, uh, I don't know. It's all, it's with this air of confidence. There's so many different attitudes with confidence, you know? Yeah, for sure, right? Like she could do, so, I mean, it's interesting what they've written even before with the whole time and I. It says spoken, not loud, but emphatic. It's like time. 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 I was on the cover of time. Like, you know, like thinking of it like the big billboard time. It's like time. It's like time. I was there. That was me. I. Me. And then, like you said, you could take that time to think about all the people. Mm and see where you go with it. Like, so when you say the time and the eye, feel kind of where you're going with it, and then react to that with the soft, everybody love me, and just see where it takes you. It might take you to a moment of, like you said, this sort of like overly confident, kind of like everyone love me, or maybe it was, or maybe it's, maybe it's more sentimental. Right. Um, that's sort of gonna be depending on how you want, I think, to play her mm -hmm. character almost overall. Cause like some of those things can kind of be like common denominator personality traits. Um, I like this. I want you, Mr. Cuddle Weddle. <laughs> Interesting. Do you know what that's in reference to? I know it says in the music, play, speaking about herself. I think I'm fairly certain and I couldn't confirm this today um, in my research, just kind of um, familiarizing myself again with with Stein. I think that was her name, and Alice's name was Baby Precious. Um, but that that's based on some memories from a couple years ago. Okay, well, I let's go with that. Let's go with that and take that as fact for now, just for the sake of the kind of experiment, really. Think about, I love this next line, I want you. Mm -hmm. I want you, Mr. Cuddle Waddle. This could really be her saying the words that, like you said, that that uh, that her partner would say to her, right? So maybe when before you when you take that breath before I want you, Mr. Cuddle Weddle, make it like you're saying it the way she was that she would hear it, right? You know, I want you. Maybe her partner was gentle. Maybe it was a different, slightly different way of saying the words or Mr. Cuddle Weddle. Like, was it overtly sexual? Was it um, like I said, gentle? Was it? Um, stereotypically feminine was it stereotypically not feminine like you know kind of think about where that takes you uh i want you mr cuddle Waddle, then i that could be again that could be separate if you want it it could be again of her like re now she's back in her body oh i again like that's me that person wanted me maybe and then i feel like this whole section there's so many different thoughts oh what a model like that's back to this she's waking up thing right so like, oh, what a muddle. And then I love this. How is it? I, is it who? How do you, how do you, um, how do you parse that out? I have ideas, but how do you, how do you think about it? Well, I think it's in the style of her cubist writing. And she, um, she always was questioning people. And she was, you know, she was always writing in that way. Um, so I see here, she's, um, critical of herself, how is it I, you know, how, how is the question I? And famously, um, on her deathbed, after sur she had surgery and her partner Alice was sitting there with her, she said, what is the answer? And Alice said, or said nothing. And in the silence, then Gertrude Stein says, well, then there is no question. So I think that's a lot of what they're pulling in here is maybe those last words of hers. Um, so I think she's being critical maybe of herself, of, you know, why am I waking, why is this the first thought maybe? 
Maybe, mm-hmm. maybe critical is too harsh of a word, but just analyzing mm-hmm. um, why she is curious. Yeah. How is it I? Is it who? Right. And, and I, I, I remember when I first looked at this, I stuck on, is it who? And maybe thinking, is, is it wrong to ask who? Should we be asking why or what? Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. How is it I, is it, yeah, you've given me more to think about. Um, right. Is it I, is it who? Because you could also take out the how for a second, right? Because then you think about how does that work? Is it I or is it who? So it's like, is the question I or is the question who, right? So I see how you can kind of go with that. And then how is it I makes me think of um, how, how is it that I am the one that's waking up here? How is it that I have, I am giving, given this, call it an opportunity. That's the way I would think about it, but maybe not her, but how is it that I'm here, right? And then is it who also made me think of the question she was asking before, which was maybe now this is who woke her up or, or who's, like you said before, who's called out to her. And maybe this could be a reiteration of that. I'm thinking of ways to keep some ideas sort of running through so that it's easier for the, the listener to understand the text and maybe the messaging of the text. Because I think that's what's so difficult about things that have a lot of layers. You have to sort of think about how you want to direct the audience's oral attention to the piece um, so that they can grasp onto something, you know, like you said, even in text that's not necessarily just like colloquial and comes across easily. So maybe, maybe in that area you can think like, how is it, think about how is it that I've come here? And again, is it who? Basically saying like, who is it? Who came here? Who's, ta- who's, who's brought me here? Maybe think about that. See if that works. I don't know. I like this conjure me, question me, question me, conjure me, question me, conjure me. That's interesting. It says or spoken above it. So what do you think about that whole little section there? Um, uh, I don't know about spoken. I've never done it spoken. Um, it, I, I think uh, with the pitches, there is, and it's a cellarando, you know, there's this agitation. Uh, um, so it can definitely be spoken because you, then there's more um, pitch options. You know, I don't have to stick with the C-E. Uh-huh. Um, I don't know, that could be interesting. I could try it. Ooh. Yeah, you could, you could try, you know, you could start it in the sort of spoken area and then let it evolve back into the singing, right? But in a real like seamless kind of fashion, conjure me, question me, question me, conjure me, you know, kind of that kind of thing. That'd be fun. Um, what else? I nearly lost myself. Okay. So this is, well, this is a beautiful, beautiful section. So she was conjure me and there's a big break in the music. So now before we even get to the break, do you think in that section of the conjure me question me, is she, where is her kind of active mind going in that, in that little section, just in terms of the words? Um, I think it's really just, again, a a why, you know, why have I, who, who, why did, why was I conjured? Conjuring, because they're not complete sentences. Um, So what, is it why, maybe why conjure me or who conjure me? Mm-hmm. Why question me? Who question me? Mm-hmm. So I, th- I think it, it's just that building agitation of I don't understand why I'm here. Mm-hmm. Um, and if, you know, if we're like waking up in the afterlife and we have to answer for something, maybe, I don't know what that would look like. Right. You know, is it a dark space and she's only aware of herself and she can't see anything? That's another thing that you know can she see when at what point does she begin to see her surroundings Mm -hmm. so 
So I think there's a lot of options. So I think a matter is a matter of just picking one mm -hmm. or two. So in the section of a conjure me, question me, why don't you choose which ones are going to be who conjured me and like question me. You said like who, who, why. Yeah, it's really more like a why. I think it's more, probably more helpful. So like conjure me, like, so who conjured me here? Why question me right now at this point in my life after I've been dead? Why are you, what's, you know, or like, why are you, uh, why did you conjure me in order to make me speak or whatever it is that's happening? Um, question me, conjure me. If you want to use the same ones for all of them, that's fine. I think you can do something with them, especially if you're doing kind of spoken into singing, because it adds a lot of different layers already. Um, and so maybe, so allow that, as you said, that kind of whirlwind um, in a way of frustration. Maybe the first one can be, it says mezzo piano, maybe the first one can be almost doubtful, just so that you have somewhere to go with it. Yes. Like, who conjure me? You know, like, conjure me. Question me, question me, conjure, conjure me, question me. So she gets to the point where she's angry. It doesn't sound like she likes to be out of control. Right, right. And then in that broken moment, she can say, I nearly lost myself. Yes. So I have a question about this, this line, I nearly lost myself. And then following, which is still the same sentence, but genius never lies. So is she referring, I can see it now more clearly that it is referring to previous I oh I nearly lost myself so maybe it is just a more topical like oh, the, oh I nearly nearly lost my my yeah, maybe I think sometimes when you take things when you listen to words sometimes without knowing too much about the backstory you can play the text yeah and sometimes the backstory gets very complicated so that's what you have to think if I play the text and I tell the text to the audience in a clear fashion and really decide on what I want them to hear uh, it'll clarify kind of in a lot of different ways. And I love that because if you got it, if you get all into this frenzy and then you have this like, I nearly lost myself. And then she has this another moment where she can then kind of turn. It's like she was like turning. It's like you were, like you said in like a film or something, she's like facing the camera one way. I nearly lost myself. But genius never lies. Yeah. Right? And she just turns to the camera and has this thing where it's like, oh, she's back. She feels like herself again. She's, Right? And then maybe in this next sentence, and genius never dies, she's kind of answering her question. She comes up with this out of a moment of total self-confidence. Genius never dies. And she's, maybe this is her rationale as to why she's waking up. Yes. Yeah. And then she goes, I was on the cover of Time. And so now instead of this being even like a pride point like it was the first time, maybe this is more, mm. well, because this, isn't it obvious? Isn't it obvious? Because I, of course, genius never dies. And of course, I'm waking up here. Of course, it's me because I was on the cover of time. I. Right? It's so interesting. Yeah. She, yeah. Go there. Go there. So she goes, yeah, it's fun. It kind of goes up and down. And then at the end, she's like, no, no, I know why I'm here. <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. It gives so much more grounding to this last section i always thought like oh, i nearly lost myself in what you know i was so like overthinking it right um of what she meant oh all right well let's do it then that's fun so the last little bit let's go back to the very front just the hey part in the very beginning i love that it says pianississimo whispered um I can do more with that too. Yeah, go really go for it and use your voice. Don't worry about it being like, like you're in a theater, especially now in this kind of medium, but also just in general, just think it's like, right? Mm. You can, I know it's like there's a period, there's no question mark. Just think about like how many different ways you could just think of this sort of, hello, mm. you know? Like looking around, looking around, or not being able to see, but but feeling some, you know. And then she has this, hey, hey, I love this old, hey, hey, ah. Think about what are what are these? Hey, he, ah, he, ah, oh, who? Maybe there's another there's another idea for you. Maybe these are not words. Maybe this is like when a baby's learning how to speak. Right for the first time, and there are sounds, and she's like, 
ha eh ah ah hey he ha ha hey oh who right and it kind of like comes out of that that could be fun yeah i like that okay cool Let's try that that's cool i'm excited yeah okay Gertrude. and with that all in mind <laughs> take two gertrude <laughs> Okay, let's do, okay, here's a C. Oop, too high. Let's not sing that C. Okay. <laughs> hey. Hey. He. Can you do those second ones just one more time? The ones that, that said pianissimo still, even softer, I think. Yeah. Really, don't even worry too much maybe about the singing yet. Because you have those lows. Hey. Hey. Uh. Oh. Hey. Oh. 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 You know, like, so your voice gets also more present as it goes along. Yes. Ooh, hard to risk that not singing those notes. Ooh. Oh, I know. I know. We got to be imperfect. <laughs> yes. I, know, I know the pain. The classical music world has done a lot for our perfect, you know, sensibilities, but we got to break that mold. We got to yes. go there. Absolutely. I think I have the C in my head, but I'm always... Oh, you can check it. Over there. <laughs> Especially with this kind of music. I just... <sighs> <sighs> a little pitch pipe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey. Hey. He... in that particular first conjure me are you feeling just curious about your surroundings are you scared at all are you like i that is curious because i usually go blank there <laughs> okay. I, I think um i don't think she's scared okay. um, i think she's so may, you know what Maybe that is would be important to show maybe that she is scared because it would contrast with the confidence when she finally starts talking about herself. Yeah, absolutely. Why not? Yeah. So why don't you maybe the ah, uh, oh, yeah. who, maybe that last who, since it says forte piano, come out a little more forte in the beginning. So yeah. it's really like you've really gone from that lows to the like pianissimo, hey, hey, ah, uh, hey, he. Ah, oh, do you realize she goes through the vowels? Because she goes, ah, eh, ah, o, oh, u, right? Basically, she almost goes through all of them. Ah, eh, he, ah, o, oh, u. So she's kind of, it's like practicing. I didn't notice that before. <laughs> I'm a bad singer. I didn't notice the vowels. <laughs> <laughs> I only noticed it right now. I was like, wait, ah, eh, he, ah, o, oh, u. Oh, cool. Okay. <laughs> Get that. <laughs> so, okay, I, yeah. It's like this, she's, she's coming into herself vocally. I, oh, ooh, right? And then now it's, ooh. So maybe this first who is actually the word who, whereas the first one was just the sound. Just the sound. Yeah, so then your second one can be who, like really the word who, oh. And then, so it's basically who, oh, who you, did you, or who, la, 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 who, Conjured me. Oh, you. Who are you that conjured me in that, that sentence? Who? Oh, conjure me. I th maybe she would be very frightened because she didn't, she, I, I mean, I'm not going to say she did bad things, but she didn't stand up for people in World War II. Right. She, she um, wrote good things about the Nazis and that may, maybe she is scared. Maybe she thinks she's she's having to speak to God or something and reckon and, and reason why she did what she did. That's oh. absolutely.
Okay, good. Do it again. Do it again. That's really good. Hey, hey, ha, 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 ha. Hey. Hey. He. I want you to find just one little thing in here just to separate a couple thoughts like mm. baby precious is it you that's one great thought right you did that so well this idea you could hear you could see it like David did baby precious is it you like is it you and maybe maybe you can add something else to that like add it like you it would be great that if it were her and maybe this is sort of like funny to you or like you know is it you that are you calling me up here is it you come on just tell me yeah. Right? Like, baby, Russia, is it you? Baby. It's interesting because then she says, baby, long. Um, how long? Which is interesting because I think that the long and the how long are separate from the baby um, in a way, in, in, in terms of the question. So maybe you can find a way for the first baby long to mm -hmm. be. Uh, maybe in that moment she has a, the thought of like, so baby, is it you that's calling me? And then you have this realization where you're going, wait, it's been so long since I've seen you. So baby, long. And then it's, and then it's how long, right? So you build on those thoughts of, un, of unknown information mm. that you're trying to figure out, right? So baby, precious, is it you? Oh, baby, long. How long, right? Mm. And then how long, right, is it? And then who? So that way you're still building back up into that who again, which was already great. So you got to this great place with the who. So just kind of maybe connect those dots in the middle. Okay. Yeah. Great. Be, uh, baby Precious? Yeah. Hey. Baby Precious, is it you? Baby long, how long is it? Ooh, sound of a sigh, I, I was the cover of time. I love 
love that. How do you like that? I really like it. It feels really specific. Mm. And I, I feel like I'm doing more than just saying this cubist text. Yeah. How long? Who? Conjure me. Um, feel. It becomes human, right? You put in feelings that you can identify with and that, you know, that you can, you can transmit easily, right? Because you really identify with them. There was one little thing I wanted you to do. I think you could make it a little bit more of a shift. You have your, oh, I nearly lost myself. And then in this breath, maybe between that idea, like stay in the land of you nearly lost yourself, like for real from the conjure me, conjure me, ah, I nearly lost myself, right? And then as you're coming down from that, like you're literally coming down from that, yeah. right? And, ah, I nearly, okay, lost myself. I didn't lose myself. I know I didn't lose myself. And like you said, have a different focus for this moment where now she's coming to this conclusion. But genius never lies. It's like maybe this is something somebody else said to her at some point. And and then she took it as a as a as a phrase that would allow her to rebuild confidence whenever she felt non-confident. And somebody said, if you're a genius and genius never lies, you should never doubt yourself. Mm. And I'm not going to doubt myself, but genius never lies. And she's like reminding herself of this thing, but genius never, never lies. And therefore I am a genius. And I know that. And the reason I'm here is because genius never dies. Right? Yeah. So this is really the moment uh, she's building herself back up. Yeah. Yeah. Just Do you want to try the conjure me, question me, question me, conjure me into that I nearly lost myself? Yeah. And then genius never lies. Yeah. And then, oh, that last I was the cover of time. I think that should just be like the declaration of why you're a genius, maybe. You know, not that they're necessarily really comparable things, but like, but to her, just say like, I was the one on the cover of time, you know? So it's not angry or anything. It's just, it's a simply stated fact that I'm genius. I, you know, genius never dies. I was on the cover of time, mm. plain and simple. I, and I love that last one is so soft. Goes, I was on the cover of time and take a breath. You can totally take a breath. It looks like there's a fermata there. And then you can just, oh, it says no breath. That's annoying. Oh, yeah, it says no breath. <laughs> That's <laughs> annoying. Okay, well then have fun with it. So I was on the cover of relish in the bottom one. Time. Oh. And then maybe that last one then is more of a question again. Just right before you're finishing this whole thing of time. And then that question is the I is, but who is I? Who am? What is I? Back to her. Right? So you're like, I was on the cover of time. Oh. Mm. Almost as if it were coming from another place in this void that she's in, wherever she is. Yeah. Cool. Okay, one more time. That's awesome. Okay, we're at Conjure Me. What did you think of my spoken? I loved it. Okay. I'll yes. do it. I'll do it, was it. Awesome. It was great. It was Love so good. It. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, oh. Conjure me, question me, question me, conjure me, question me, conjure me. You do that last phrase one more time just yep. one more time really get your brain to to switch to get your face to um feel the shift of i was on the it was me mm. i was on the cover of time i you know that just little tiny i was on the cover of time i mm. i you think know? do exactly what you did with like at eye a, a, a really significant eye shift 
Yeah, even if it's, but it's, it, but it's even small, right? It's like, it doesn't have to be huge, okay. depending on what your audience is, right? But it's like, I was, because it could be anywhere. If you're doing this out here, it could be like, I was on the cover of, oh, you have to breathe, right? I was on the cover of time. And time, don't forget, time for her too. She's also saying before, genius never dies. So now time is not even just the magazine as we all think of it. Time as an all time. She's going to be there for all time, right? So she's like, I was on the cover of time. Oh. Mm. you know, like a moment of whatever it was, or it could be introverted and then shift out, but play around whatever feels best for you. Okay, great. Do you want to start right there at that's measure 50, it looks like? Yeah, if that's comfortable for you, unless you want to do the line before it again, but up to you. Um, yeah, I'll do right on that. Okay. I'll be guitars. Maybe not sing a B again. <laughs> fantastic. That last time you sang it was fantastic. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> Genius never dies. I was the cover of time. Oh. Yeah, I kind of love that. I tried to go like, like I was like, who am I? Yeah. Last one. Yeah. Period there. You know, there's I was the cover of time, period. I period mm -hmm. a complete thought for her mm -hmm. I yeah and you know as you do it you could decide later on that you want it in the same vein as the first concept because it could be more of like I was in the cover of time I. you know you could you could pick that one too you know you could try that and see how it feels right that's great what an interesting aria yeah I, I love it it has become I sang the role two years ago um, with a project at UNT, um, and we did all of the works of Tom Chipulo, um, like as a program. It was it was really cool, and and since then, it has become sort of my my go to English. Yeah, you know? and I love I I love it. I love it. That's terrific. That's really great. I'd love to hear it with the accompaniment too. That's so cool. Oh, I'm so glad we did this. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's been such a pleasure and I just have loved diving into this with you. It's been so exciting. Oh, that's so fun. I'm so glad. This is an exciting piece. It really kind of lends itself for a lot of really good thinking. And um, it's kind of great to actually have such a disjunct piece in a way. It's not disjunct, but like in that sense, right? Because you really have to... Both the words and the, the melody can be disjunct. Exactly. Yeah. A lot of times you're able to find, well, you can make up sometimes more of what you need than maybe in a piece that the melody perhaps is so indicative of a mood, you know, or, you know, I was doing uh, uh, another aria, you know, earlier today and absolute, you know, Verismo Puccini, wonderful, also incredibly beautiful and heartbreaking. And it has a very different, you know, um, the music is also very specific sometimes about what's happening, right? Yeah. Interesting. Oh, it was such a pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much. Thank you.